In that case, we will dismiss the children to uh, their time uh, for, of lesson. I guess it's down in the basement, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. We give God great thanks for not only our kids, our covenant kids, that's the next generation, that's the future, but also uh, pray for the leaders of this group as they lead them. I have a couple of texts that I'm going to share with you. Uh, this morning, again, we talked about the will of the sovereignty of God, His will, under three separate headings, and uh, it's out of Ephesians. I'm sure that we could have gone further and done much more, but there's uh, only so much time. And that is uh, uh, the adoption that God has given to us. We are blessed by his adoption, blessed by his deliverance, and blessed by the inheritance we have. This afternoon, we're going to be talking about the sovereignty of God, his way. Now, you know, it's interesting. It, my dad, let me just show the story before we read the texts, because I think it's, it's emblematic. My dad had a will, and his will was expressed in one instance. Let me just give this, make, make sure you kind of understand this. My dad had a will for cutting the grass. He cut the grass every Thursday. There was a reason for this. Like with God's will, my dad had a plan and a purpose. The reason why you cut the grass on Thursday evening was so that the yard would look good for when he was off of work on Saturday. He didn't want to spend the day on Saturday cutting it. He didn't want to cut it on Friday after work. He wanted it cut on Thursday so it looked nice. And by the way, cutting the grass for my father did not mean going out with the lawnmower and cutting it. It meant pulling all the weeds, and it meant trimming all the edges, and it meant doing the whole business. But he had a way for doing this. My dad's way for doing it, we had a square yard, and the first time you cut it, you cut it on an angle this way, and the second time, you cut it on an angle. You're, you're smiling. Did you meet my dad? No? You cut it on an angle this way, and then you cut it straight this way, and then you cut it straight this way. That's the way you did it. Well, one day, knowing the will of my father, I went out and I cut it in a circle. Now, I didn't think he would really notice, but the fact of the matter is we had a Toro lawnmower, it was one of the first ones with a bag on the side, and as the bag would fill up with grass, that side was heavier so that there was a rut that was, they, it pulled the lawnmower down just a little bit, and so you could see not only where the rut was, but the grass was uneven. It did not go well for me, not following my father's way. I could know the will, but not follow the way, and trouble ensues. That's why these two messages are so important to go together. Sovereignty of God, His will, you've already, we've already gone over that, I'm not going to repeat it again, now His way. And here's the text, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, and Galatians, which is really the text, Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. First John chapter 14, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to, to myself that where I am, you may be also. And here it is, you know the way where I am going. Thomas must have been a lot like me or I'm a lot like Thomas. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I'm struck by that, and before we read Galatians, what does Jesus say to every one of the disciples? Follow me. You want to know the way to God? And this is what Jesus says right here. I am the way, follow me. I am the way. You want to know where I'm going? You want to know the way? Follow me. I am the way. Galatians 1, 1 to 10. By the way, that's the simplest, exp that's the simplest explanation of the message, message right there. You want to know the way? Follow Jesus. Simple. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me to the churches of Galatia, 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our... The, and here it is. He re, delivered us, what, why? According to the will of our God and Father, to whom to be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, here's the way. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and who want to distort the gospel of Christ. Even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one which you have received, and I know you receive with Christopher week after week, let him be accursed, for I am now seeking for now, for I, let me get this right, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. To us, this is indeed the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we come, come to you this, this afternoon hour once again. Give you thanks. We ask that you, as we open up your word to see it this afternoon, that you would uh, open up our hearts to it. We have heard your will clearly expressed through Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Your will. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. Father, thank you for the great love that you have lavished on us through your will. And now, Father, we pray that we may live your way. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, here's the simplest expression. Follow me. Where is Jesus going? He's going home. It's that simple. Follow me. Where? Where are we going? I don't know the I don't know where you're going. How can I know the way? Thomas, Thomas, man. Come on, man. Think about this. Think this through. What stories have I told you? Thomas, listen to the story of the parable of the prodigal. What is the point of the story of the parable of the prodigal? The prodigal needed to go home. He needed to go home to the father. There's where we're going. There's the way. How do we follow? We follow the way of Christ, the way Jesus walked, the way Jesus lived, what Jesus said, what Jesus did. Follow Jesus where? The goal, home to the Father. It's really that simple. The problem is too many of us don't know. We don't know the Father. We don't know the Father. We don't know the way. We don't know what his will is. Or perhaps we, for, you know, you get to my age, you tend to forget a lot of stuff. And, and you, you, I've, I've probably forgotten more points of theology that I learned in seminary over 40 years ago than I remember. So the problem is not that I didn't know it or that I don't know it, it's that I've forgotten it. And, and I don't know how many times, isn't this so, so true? Um, you know, you're, my mom, we, we live close to, to town, and I would, she'd say, Paul, get on your bike, ride it into town, and I need for you to pick up milk, milk, eggs, flour, and some weird thing, just some odd thing. And she'd say, say oranges. And so I'd get on my bike, and I'd ride into town. Now, it only took about 10 minutes to ride to town, and it only took about five minutes to go through the grocery store, and it only took about 10 minutes to go back. Now, I don't know how you count that up, but that's 25 minutes, less than a half an hour. It was, only, it was less than 15 minutes to get out of my bike and ride into town. And I'd get into the grocery store and I'd say, God, milk, eggs, flour. Milk, eggs, flour. i get the milk, the eggs, and the flour after puzzling for about five or ten minutes. I'd get home. Where's the oranges? Oh, I forgot. Isn't this kind of who we are? We hear it. You've heard, you've heard messages from Christopher and whoever was before Christopher in this congregation over the course of years. And if I were to ask you to tell me what Christopher has said, you could probably give me a lot of the stuff that he said. And I can guarantee you that Christopher would probably say, but did you remember? And you say, oh, I forgot. It's just the way we are. It's human beings. It's part of, part of what it means to be a human, human being. So our life, our life as lived in God's will should be driving us 
the, the intent, the purpose, the focus is driving us to go home, to be back together with the Father, to be in relationship and fellowship with our brother, Jesus Christ, and to live in the Spirit of God, praising God and glorifying God and thanking God for all that we've been given, especially life in His name. That's the way of God. It's the way to go home. Now, the way it's expressed in this passage, according to Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 to 10, is simply this. You know, first of all, you got to know who this is. I'm going to give you the three points so you can write them down and we're going to fill them in. First of all, the sender of the message. Who's the sender of the message? And you'll notice who Paul reinforces and says over and over and over and over again who the sender of the message is. It's not Paul, it's not one of the apostles. It's God Almighty and Jesus Christ himself, the Word of God. The second part is the message. So we've got the sender of the message. Who sent it? What is the, the nature of the message? And then finally, the third point is, if you know the mess, who sent the message and you know what the message is, then you know the way to get home. First of all, Paul tells us who the message sender is not. God's way is not found by man. In our neck of the woods, it's not found by Joseph Smith. It's not a news broadcast or an item in the newspaper. It's not an organization. It is simply the Word of God. Merely, I'm going to use the word merely the way C.S. Lewis uses it, merely. Merely is not like as in less than. Merely is a simply. It's simply this. It's all we need. It's all we'll ever need. Follow the word of God. It's it's a little bit like you know I got a I've got a map in, in the car of Idaho, uh, and I don't know I, I don't think I've taken we moved here about a year and a half uh, about a year and a half ago I guess it is now and and uh, I don't take out the map very often because I have a nag in my car. She's my GPS system. She nags me with some degree of regularity. In a, in a thousand feet, turn left. In 300 feet, turn left. Now, the thing is, I have the nag yelling at me, but I got the map up on my screen. It's the GPS, and I'm a visual person, not an auditory person. I need to see it, to see it happening. And there's a lot of folks that are like that. But we've been given the map, and we hear the voice of the Lord. Do you hear Jesus? Do you, know, do you know the voice of God and do you hear him? Do you listen to him? And in hearing him, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to read John 14. Because it's the voice of Jesus calling to us. And he says, look at Thomas. And you can put your own name, put, fill in the blank. Look at blank. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Where are we going? Home to the Father. He tells us he's building a mansion for us there. He's building a house for us there. I don't know if it's a mansion. It's a house. It's a dwelling. He's got a place for us. That's where I'm going to live. That's where I'm going. Where? Home. Who? Father. How? Jesus. Boom. Done. The way of God is by his word, his will, by the Spirit. It's who it is. And it's interesting, the word that Paul uses in this passage, it, it, it's through Christ. It's, a, it's according to. The gospel according to or through Jesus Christ. It's an ob, This is moving through an object. The, the, you know the word diameter? If you use dia, diameter. It means through something, right? So how are we going to understand going home to the Father? Only through, by moving in and through Jesus Christ, the living Son of God, the Word of God, by the grace of God. It's how we do it. This is the way. The Word in, uh, in matter of fact, we know this. If you look carefully, if you were to read Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then it says something really peculiar. And God, and the word in the Hebrew is, and God the bar. He worded. The, the word the bar in Hebrew means he worded something. God said it, 
whammo, and it happened. But that's repeated in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. How do we know that what God did was God's work in the beginning? Because it said God worded it, and in John chapter 1 it said, God, He was there in the beginning with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, God's Word, is the sender of the message. Where does this come from? It comes from the very heart of God, through the, by the mind of God, by the mouth of God, Jesus Christ. That simple. Secondly, is the message. If you look carefully at verse 4 in this particular passage, you just, the, ver, the message is this. He, who gave himself for our sins. Here's the message. This is the gospel. He gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of God our Father. What's the message that we offer the world around us? When you leave here today, when you go back out into the world, when you go to school or whatever it is you're going to be doing the next week, what's your message? You have an opportunity to be delivered. Delivered from what? The world around us. We talked about that this morning. Do you really, are, are you really enjoying the world around us? We moved out of L.A. a year, a year and a half ago right before people started to run around through the streets breaking windows and stealing everything they could. Before they walked up to people at open air cafes and robbed them in broad daylight. Before they were mugged on the subway in LA. A year and a half ago, we moved out of that. Do you think, would I like to move back to LA because it's warmer there? No, because of everything else that's there. I don't want to go back to the world. I don't want to go back to that. Do you really want to go back to the way things were? Let's go to the way things can be. Let's go to Jesus Christ. So the message is really very simple. It's an expression of God's generosity. This is what Paul is saying in this particular passage. Who gave himself, it's a generous gift, for God so loved the world that he gave his son to deliver us from the present evil age, from our sins, and to deliver us into the hands of the loving Father. Now, do you earn it? Do you deserve it? There's a commercial on TV that I absolutely detest, and it's about Medicare. And I knew, you know, up until about four years ago, I didn't ever listen to these commercials. Now I listen to them pretty carefully. And on this one particular commercial for Medicare, it says, get all the benefits you there it is. Get all the benefits you deserve. I don't deserve any of them. I didn't work for it. I don't deserve it. I don't work for the grace of God. I don't work for the salvation of God. It's a free gift of the grace of God. Not, not as if I deserved it. You know, if we really are honest to God, what we really deserve is hell. That's what I deserve. I deserve exactly what I worked for all my life. And I can still remember, before I became a Christian, I, I had been to Vietnam for two years, and I met this young lady, like I told you this morning, and, and uh, one night, the, the first night, actually it was our first date, and, and uh, it really wasn't much of a date because she really didn't want to be with me. She just had three other guys from the youth group that she wanted to be with instead. <sighs> she shared with me the entirety of the gospel. And when she'd finished the gospel message, which was essentially this, she said to me, you can have this. And I, she shared all that with me after I had shared with her everything I'd ever done. And I told her everything I'd ever done. because My intention was to be with her for a very long time, and I didn't want one of my friends to come up and, by the way, did Paul ever tell you the time when? And it was, not, it was one of the stories I hadn't told her, and it was a deal breaker. you know. And she'd go, well, okay, that's it. I'm not going to see you anymore. So I, I figured... I'd rather have her tell me she's not going to see me anymore the first time I saw her rather than the 25th or 30th time or after 10 years. So I told her all this horrible stuff that I'd done, and she says, doesn't matter. Jesus died for your sins. He loves you. And I said, no, you don't understand. My grandma told me that if I did all this stuff, I was going to go to hell, and I've done all that stuff, so I'm going to hell. I, I, I at least knew where I was going. The next day, I picked her up to take her to church. It was a place called Winding Way Community Church. It was a Reformed church in Carmichael, California. And the pastor there had a 
a, what, a black, this is old, I'm, I'm very old. This is, he had a blackboard, not a whiteboard. That's how old I am. And on the bottom of the board, he wrote the word sin in itty bitty little letters so you could hardly see it. And across the whole rest of the board, he wrote the word grace. And he simply said this, the grace of almighty God completely overwhelms the sin of humanity. And I turned to Ruth and I said, we're going to come back to this place. I need to hear more about this. And I've been ever since. Six weeks later, I got baptized and professed Christ. See, it's a simple, me- it really is such a simple message. Are you enjoying your life the way it is today? This, this is us talking to folks out there. Are you enjoying your life the way it is today? Is it going good for you? How's it going? Who's doing all the work? Are you struggling? Are you bearing burdens? Is it, is it heavy? Is it too heavy for you? I got good news. Doesn't have to be that way. I know someone who will take that off your back. Get that monkey off your back. He'll get that burden off your back. He'll overcome all the hurdles and obstacles of your I know somebody. His name is Jesus. And it's really that simple. And the beauty of it is, it's not just a lifestyle here. We're not talking about moralism and moral, moral lifestyles, although that is certainly a byproduct. You, you will live differently. But the point of it all is, what Jesus wants is to deliver me from sin and evil so I don't have to be sent to hell. He's delivering me. It's like he put postage on my forehead and said, said return to sender. Take him home. There it is. I get to go home. He delivers me to home, to my Father. He pulls me out of this life. That's what Paul says in this passage. To pull us out, to deliver us, rescued by God, and take it home. When I was in Vietnam, one of the niftiest things I got to do, and I, I did this for about the first nine months, is I was a pararescueman in the Air Force. And what we would do is we would, we would go out to where a pilot had been shot down, and he, typically, typically if, he, if he was shot down, he was in the midst of enemy territory. So you got to kind of picture this. you got a bunch of people out there who don't like you, who want to kill you. And you're there, and you're, you've been shot down. You haven't got any food. You haven't got any water. And you probably need medical care and attention so that you can get home, so that you can get healed again and be made whole. But you have no way of getting out of this encirclement because that's where you're at. And into that environment, they would drop us. And we would pick up pilots. I can still remember picking up one guy. And I'm not going to go into any gross, great detail because it's right before. I mean, some of you have eaten. You don't want to. <clears throat> but he had a very, very serious wound. And I was able to patch it up sufficiently, get him in the harness, get him up in the helicopter. Now, the beauty of when you did this is you didn't take him halfway home. You didn't take him and drop him into the jungle and say, figure it out. You can make it your own way. Or We didn't, after having patched him up, then drop him back into the same situation and say, figure it out. No, we took him home to be healed, to be to given rest, to find true contentment, to find true peace, to find true wholeness, true restoration. That's what Jesus Christ is wants to do for us. That's the gospel of God. And that's the way. Which leads to the last part of this. If you know who the sender is, if you do know, if you know the sender, if you know God, and you do know the message, and it's a simple message, follow me, then here, let's go home. But here's our problem. Paul lays out the problem. That's one of the biggest problems we have in our society today. He says it this way. Uh, I want to turn back to the test. I'm astonished. After he's given all this good news, he says, Amen. So be it. So be it truly. This is the way it is. And then he goes on and says, I'm astonished that you so quickly desert him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one. This book was probably written around 46 to 50 AD. It's one of the first books, if not the first book that was written, or the first letter that was written in Scripture in the New Testament. This church of Galatia has probably only had the gospel 
for 10 to 12 years. Think about that. I'm looking at some 10 to 12 year olds out there. They've heard the gospel for 10 to 12 years. And yet, in 10 to 12 years, they have been messed up. They've been, it's been distorted. It's been bent. I, it's a little bit like, you know, you, you ever go to those old fun houses where you, you stand in front of the mirror and, and so you're, 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 a, you're a really thin person and it makes you look like this or you're really, and it makes you look thin or your face gets all wiggly and wobbly or you, know, you just don't, it's distorted. Is that really you? If you have somebody say, is that you? Is it, no, that's not me. That's a distorted image. You now know what the image of God is through Jesus Christ. You know what that message says. Anything other than that simple message is pure lie, heresy, and distortion. Simply put, there is no other way. The false gospel, and I can list a whole mess of them. One of the ones that I came face to face with when we got up here, I didn't realize it was this way, was Mormonism. I've read Joseph Smith's Book of Mormon. Shakespeare would have been proud. I've read Doctrine and Covenants. I've read The Pearl of Great Price. That's not distortion. That's broken. That's, that's beyond distortion. Think about Jehovah's Witnesses. Think about any one of a number of groups that have been active and involved in the course of my very... Yeah, I'm getting old. I'm close to 70. In 70 years, I've seen a whole mess of very strange things. The Unification Church, that bunch that went down to Guyana, Jim Jones bunch. There's been a whole bunch of them. Folks who have merely, simply distorted the gospel. And it's not that hard to distort. Really? Well, just... Just try on your own. Just keep making an effort. Pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. There's a whole bunch of different simple ways of doing this, and they're all wrong. Every one of them. There's only one way. Trust God and trust Jesus Christ. See, it's this, this distortion is actually like a cancer. You know, cancer doesn't just happen in the body. Cancer actually comes from a, a cell, a good cell that was distorted. It's actually, a, in biologic terms, it's a good cell that didn't quite get the full DNA message or the full RNA message. And when it didn't get the full message, it broke wrong. And when it broke wrong, it started a chain reaction that broke this cell, and then it broke these two cells, and then it broke these four cells. And it, it goes on and on, and it, it, it spreads like wildfire, and it's all broken. The only way we can get it back is to use the chemotherapy of the blood of Christ. Apply the blood and watch what God does. Because what the gospel really does is it takes us home, and that's what Paul's point is. You see, it's not that I'm, I'm not up here preaching today to please anybody that's out there. I realize you're on TV, so to speak. It's being streamed. and I don't know who's out there looking, and it doesn't make any difference because I'm not preaching for them. And I'm really not even preaching for you. Not that I preach to please anybody. Just tell people the truth. It's that simple. John 14, I am the way. Where are we going? What's the way? Where are we going? We're going home to the Father. Only God can lead the way. Grace justifies. Grace sanctifies. Grace sets us free. I uh, am a big fan. I, have a, I love to read uh, one author in, in fiction. His name is Clive Cussler. I don't know if anybody ever reads Clive Cussler. I don't know if there are any Cussler fans out there, but Clive Cussler has a story called Sahara, and in that movie, uh, there's water, and when, when, when the, the scientist reaches down and grabs this water out of this particular river, he looks at it, and it just looks like regular water, but the problem is, it looks like regular water, but it's deadly, it's poisonous, it's tainted. And the problem with this particular water is the river flows out into the Atlantic Ocean, and if this particular water gets out in the Atlantic Ocean, it's not going to just taint the river. It's going to taint the ocean. If it taints the ocean, it kills it. If it kills the Atlantic, what's next? This is what's going on in our world today with different groups. We have a message to give. 
And the message we give is the message of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you now in the afternoon hour now of this day, giving you all the praise, honor, and glory, and all the thanks for who you are, for what you've done, for what you've given, for your will. The will of adoption, the will of deliverance, the will of hope, the inheritance. But more than that, Father, it's not that you've just given your will, you've shown us your way. Your way is your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the living Word. May we live the Word, follow the way, and come home and glorify you. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's close our time.